All right, so in this video we're just going to continue looking at turning points, but this time how we can determine their nature. In other words, are they a maximum or a minimum? Now quickly, just in terms of terminology, a maximum is where a curve comes up and it reaches this turning point here, um, and it's a maximum value, and then it starts to go back down. A minimum, which is fairly obviously coming down, and it reaches that minimum value there before it then starts going back up. Now, a lot of the time it's going to be fairly obvious from looking at a graph. So, for example, in this uh, function we looked at to begin with, the x cubed minus 3x squared, over here on the left you can see it comes up, reaches a maximum, heads back down, gets a minimum, and then accelerates away again. So it's fairly obvious by just looking at the graph, but if we were asked to show through uh, calculus the, uh, the nature of these turning points, we'd have to do a little bit more maths. Now um, also sometimes you may find some of the functions are not that recognisable and it may be a little tricky to actually determine the nature of the turning point. So anyway, we'll just keep going down here. If you have a look, we've got the gradient function sketched out. If we go down and do our second derivative, which in other words is going to be the gradient of the gradient function, we can see here right in the middle that has a gradient of zero. And prior to this point, this is sloping downwards, it was very negative here, very steep downwards, and it flattens off, which means we end up with a straight line coming through. This is a little bit positive and increasingly positive as it slopes upwards, which means our gradient function continues upwards in a straight line. Now, if we go right down, and I'll just move this up a bit, from these two turning points, if we take our line and we go down, 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 all the way down to our second derivative here, where it hits, I come across this is a positive value. If I go from my other one and come all the way down, all the way down to the bottom and hit, this is negative, it is below the x-axis. Okay. Now the, what this means is, you can see here the up, up the top, the maximum where this curve was coming up and then started turning down, the maximum, if I come down to my second derivative is actually negative. So if it is less than zero, um, then it means the turning point must be a maximum. Alternatively, you can see our minimum here. If we follow this all the way down to our second derivative and come across, you can see it is a positive value in our second derivative. So if it is second derivative is greater than zero, it means that the turning point must be a minimum. And so, again, just quickly running through how we found those turning points, we, we take the original function and we differentiate it, giving us 3x squared minus 6x. We then solve this to zero because we know in a turning point the gradient is equal to zero. And from this we get x equals, well we can factorise it, I'll go right through the process for you. So we know that the x coordinates of those turning points are zero and two. And now what we can do, if we take the second derivative this is what we call the second derivative test. I'll write that down for you. Second derivative test. And if we take that second derivative, which is going to be 6x minus 6, if we substitute in those two turning point x coordinates, um, we can determine the nature of them. So if I substitute 0 into here, I'm going to get 6 lots of 0 minus 6, which is negative 6. Now that value there, you can see, is less than 0 therefore it must be a maximum. If I substitute in, so I'll just scroll up a bit here, if I substitute in the other x coordinate of a turning point, which was 2, I'm going to get 6 lots of 2 minus 6, which is 6. That is positive, is greater than 0, therefore the turning point must be a minimum. So this is what we call the second derivative test, and effectively what you're doing is you need to differentiate the original function twice, and then substitute in the x coordinates of those turning points. And if you get a result that is less than zero, the turning point must be a maximum. If it is greater than zero, it must be a minimum. And in the next video, we'll look at what happens if the second derivative test equals zero.